Hi, once again, everyone, and welcome to another University of Houston Alumni Association interview. I'm Tom Franklin, and my guest today is Professor Simon Bott from the Chemistry Department here at the University of Houston. Simon, thanks for joining me. Anytime, Tom. Thank you. All right, first of all, let me establish something. You're not from around here, are you? No, no, Sugarland, actually. Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, originally the other side of the pond. Yeah. All right. Tell me about growing up there and how you made it over here to Houston. Um, well, it's kind of embarrassing. It's great fun growing up. I grew up in a place called Brighton, which is right on the south coast. It's where people from London come to have a day by the sea or a weekend by the sea. So it was uh, kind of like growing up in a combination of um, Atlantic City, Florida, and New Orleans okay. um, for all the good and the bad parts of them. Um, did my undergraduate over there and um, was very involved as an undergraduate, did a lot of things outside of class to the extent that I didn't get a good enough degree to go on into grad school there. <laughs> so um, I, uh, I was actually applying for jobs as an accountant and an insurance salesman and a lab technician and uh, got the opportunity to go into Alabama to go to graduate school and so came over at the uh, grand age of 21 to do that. So you're in Alabama doing grad school, but you still have to move a little further west to get to Houston. How did that happen? Um, just uh, the right, right job at the right time. I, you know, I finished in Alabama, went back to England for a year, Boston, back to Alabama, and then got a job at North Texas. So uh, that was what got me in the state of Texas. And um, after seven years, sort of moved on up to pecking order and came down here. What was it about the University of Houston that allured you here? Um, well, first of all, they offered me a job. That's a good thing. <laughs> it was uh, it was a very good chemistry department. I, it was sort of f f funny. Um, you know, this was I got to North Texas in 1990, came here in 97, and there was absolutely no doubt at North Texas that U of H was an excellent school, definitely the number three public school in the state, and probably closer to A and M than A and M was to UT. And you know, it's it. it from, from that far away from UH, we, we realized how good a place it was and what a great opportunity it was for me to get here. So, um, so tell me about teaching here and, and, and your love for not only teaching but for your students. Um, well, teaching is, is it's a wonderful opportunity to have. Um, yeah, we don't quite touch the, the, the students like you do when you're a first grade teacher or a high school teacher, but we do get to see that, that maturing from a teenager and into an adult, and it's, it's, it's a very satisfying and enjoyable and fulfilling feeling when you see somebody walk across the stage that you'd seen four years ago in a chemistry class all freaking out and so mm -hmm. on. And, um, and the, the UH students, they, they, I admire them so much. I mean, I've taught a bit at Rice, I taught a bit at MIT, I taught a bit at Oxford when I was in these different places. and. Um, yeah, the student body there, some of them are smarter than we have here, but they, you don't feel that they get much out of the instruction and you don't feel they get as much out of the university environment because they're, they've, they've had a lot of advantages throughout their life. Whereas at U of H, we got some, you know, we, we attract a lot of those, those students, but we also get a lot of first generation um, yeah, first in their family to come to right. college. Um, a lot of international students who are working their way up the hard way. And it's, it's very enjoyable, again, and fulfilling to work with some of those students and actually see them blossom and see them overcoming the issues that they have that you don't see when you're at an Oxford or a Rice. Been here almost 15 years, coming to 97. Mm -hmm. How much has this place changed in that time? Um, a lot. It's, uh, I mean, I'm sure the, the, the expected answer is, well, it's unbelievable. Um, we've got a lot of new buildings. We've got great spirit on campus. One thing, though, that it was a very good university in 1997. Um, a lot of our um, members or fellows of National Academies, that's one of the Tier 1 um, counts, they were here in 97. Mm -hmm. and in fact, a lot of them were more active in 97 than they are today. We still had nationally ranked programs. Um, Carl Lewis had still come here and so on. So for me, the biggest change is that we're no longer a diamond in a very deep rough. It's, that rough has been ex taken away and now we're a diamond there, you know, on the fairway, if not the putting green <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and that, that's for me, is the greatest thing. We, we've, we've obviously improved in a lot of ways, but the biggest thing we've improved in is that uh, people's perception of us, and of course perception is reality for them, because people's perception has broken through with the truth. 
you said that as a student you were involved in a lot of different things mm -hmm. and as a teacher I see you involved in encouraging your students to be involved mm -hmm. in a lot of different things because the college experience is so much more than just what they get in the classroom isn't it? Absolutely yeah um, I don't want them as involved as I was because I, <laughs> I hit the point where it adversely affected my studies but yeah I mean it's hard to quantify but for an average 18 year old they're in class you know, maybe 15 hours a week. They should be on campus 40 hours a week. Um, a lot of that's studying, but a lot of it is getting involved in things. It's, it, it breaks down into two, two areas. There's the extra education part. Um, they need to go to some of the plays. I mean, you look at people like Edward Albee and Stuart Ostro that we have here on campus. I mean, that's, those are world-class people mm -hmm. that our students can be exposed to. For, same thing for music. You know, Abby Simon, the most recorded artist, pianist in the world, is here with a piano, um, well, recitals he does himself and has all his buddies come. Um, some of the lectures that, that you get to, just Monday, we had the, the former Prime Minister of India here on, on campus. And so students need to go to those to, to broaden their education, in quotes. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the development as a person. There's, there's, you know, one of our great strengths is our, the diversity of our student body, and students need to get out and mix with... Uh, um, students from different races, different religions, different parts of the world. Um, they need to get involved in organizations and develop as a person, develop their leadership skills, their ability to interact with people and inspire them and so on. So, yeah, it's all of that is so important. And it's, it's one thing, you know, if you're a 40-year-old coming back to college just to get another qualification or something. And then, yeah, go to class. But for that 18 to 21-year-old group, I, I think what they do outside the classroom is almost as important as what they do inside. Is that part of the dynamic behind Cougar Trading Cards? Absolutely, yeah. Tell people what Cougar Trading Cards is and, and, and what it involves. Um, well, we have a set of, this year it's 58 cards um, featuring different people associated with the university. For example, you've got one, of course, this year. You're really um, hitting the bottom <laughs> of the barrel with that one, I'll tell you. We have uh, winners of the teaching awards from last year have cards, winners of the alumni awards have cards, um, the regents have cards, Dr. Gator has a card. Um, some of our state reps who represent this area and our alums of UH have cards. So, and students get them when they go to things. Um, last night, for example, we gave out three cards for students who attended the soccer game. Um, first football game, there'll be a card. Workshops, plays, concerts, student groups. Pretty much, uh, my goal is that anything that happens on campus outside the classroom is a trading card event. Students go, they get a card. And as they collect the cards, they get better and better prizes. Ultimately, if they get the whole set of 58, they get a $1,000 scholarship. Wow. And so the whole thing is just to provide an extra little bit of incentive to students for um, just getting involved, going to things outside of the classroom. Getting involved is what this is all about. You getting involved with your university is what we want you to be in even after your days as a student here. You can do that by joining the Alumni Association. You go online at www.houstonalumni.com to sign up. We have various membership programs for you to take a look at and all provide a lot of corporate benefits for you. People like Avis and Budget Rent-A-Car and uh, Choice Power and Landry's Restaurants, just to name a couple of our corporate sponsors. We'll get you some benefits along the way, but we want you to be reconnected and proud of your university. You do that by joining the Alumni Association, www.houstonalumni.com. For those of you already members, maybe it's time you upgrade to life member status. We thank you for your membership and if you consider upgrading, there's even a few more benefits that go along with that. But all it is, is getting involved with your school. Showing your Cougar pride, www.houstonalumni.com. For Dr. Simon Bott, I'm Tom Franklin. Thanks for joining us on this edition of the University of Houston Alumni Association Interviews.